everybody and welcome back to Alex Elliott Golf. Today's video is all about how we can improve your chipping. So there's two things I often see happen with a lot of people when they're chipping around the green. So roughly about 15, 20 yards from the fringe, that kind of like low checking shot. There's a lot of things that I see go wrong, but I'm gonna pick two for you. So my first kind of point is that how people stand to the ball. I see very often kind of a wide stance, almost like they're gonna hit a normal shot. Their weight sort of even 50-50. And then this kind of really makes it very hard to get that point of contact with the ground that's just past the ball. Because as we know, with a pitch shot, we like to get the ball, then turf. So we're hitting down on the golf ball. So having this weight 50-50 really makes it hard to create a consistent low point in your swing. And also, therefore, because of that, a consistent strike on the golf ball. Because imagine if I was here and my weight was changing as a result of not having it on my left side then my point of contact and my low point is constantly changing, so it's a variable. So for me, that's the first point in IC. People standing to the ball incorrectly cause them to have missed strikes and missed shots around the green. And so for a lot of people, just a simple change in setup would really help them improve their chipping. The second point is I really feel that people misunderstand how their body works through the chipping action. And I think people feel it's a very kind of armsy action and don't really feel they have to get their body through to the target. So I very often see, and for me, the, the setup incorrectly, and this kind of comes together. So as a result of setting up incorrectly, I see kind of this action happen a lot. Arms break down, bit of a chicken wing across the ball, really causing that miss strikes, not, not getting that body moving through to the target. So ultimately, the arms and the hands are really just controlling the shot. It's not an arms and body move together. They're not in sequence together. So if you're one of those people that you feel you stand to the ball incorrectly, so sort of a wider stance, weight 50-50, and you really kind of see this move here where the body stops and the arms break down and we see this kind of chicken wing effect, then this drill and this setup will really help your game. We'll hopefully see you go from a person that struggles with their chipping and struggles with their pace control to somebody that can get a really nice, crisp, low checking strike. Let's get into how we're gonna improve your game. So point number one, I really wanna improve how you're gonna to stand to this golf ball before we talk about the release and getting rid of this chicken wing. So really kind of simple checkup points and I really like to see in a lot of good players and I see these points in a lot of good players, how they stand to the golf ball correctly and really make sure their consistent low point is past the golf ball. So point number one, I wanna see that ball just in the middle of your stance. So reference point is your zip. Then from there, I wanna see your stance just wide of a clubbed width apart. So my reference point there, you're just using my club head. And I use my 52 there, so it can be any club head. Just really making sure that that stance is just wide of a club head width apart. Then from there, I wanna feel like my weight goes on my left side 60-40. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna imagine I'm gonna go into my pocket. So I'm gonna go into my pocket to grab my tees. My weight's on that left side now. And I've really got that sound set up where I'm dominating the strike and I feel like my low point is past the golf ball. And if I feel like I keep my weight there, I've got a very good chance of creating that downwards bruising action on the turf in order to strike the golf ball correctly. So, and also my final reference point, where this butt of the club is, and a lot of people I see kind of these hands really far forward. I really like to see this butt of the club just on the golf ball. So it's just slight on the golf ball. And another reference point could be your left belt rung. So my hands are on the golf ball, and that's my keys to my correct setup in order to give you the best chance of dominating the strike. Now, like we said earlier, having that stance that's really wide, weight 50-50, gives you those inconsistencies in your interaction with the ground. So by having those set up points, ball in the middle of the stance, stance just wide of a club width apart, weight 60-40 on the lead side, really gives you a chance of creating that downwards hit on the golf ball that is consistent. Yes, we need to talk about the release now, but having a correct setup gives you the best chance of striking your chips correctly. Now let's talk through how you can train a better release of this golf club with the body and arms working together. So it's not all independent and we're not seeing that action of this chicken wing, arms off the side of the body, creating that inconsistency in strike, inconsistencies in distance control, and therefore not really giving you any confidence in your short game. Now, all you need for this drill is a glove, and two alignment sticks. Now, I place these alignment sticks on a roughly a 40 degree angle either side, and I'll show you this from down the line too. 
Now, I want you to take your stance where the alignment sticks are just past your toes, okay? So your toes are on it. And then from there, let's go through that setup that we had earlier. So we're in a stance and ball position in the middle of the stance. Stance is just wide of a club head width apart. Then from there, go into the pocket, feel the weight 60, 40 on that lead side. Then from there, I've got my correct setup in order to operate around. Now, really simple feelings. I've got two sticks that I need to avoid here in order to feel that better release. So we've said before that chicken wing release, we would collide into the stick and see that separation here on the left side. If we get that really good, nice release with the body and arms work together, we'll see something like this. I've missed the stick, my zip as far as my club head, and I'm really, my chest is sort of towards the target too. Whereas before, when we said earlier, those people that body stops working, club head overtakes the hands. For this shot, that's not what we want to achieve. So I'll show you that again. We want to see this, avoid the sticks. We don't want to see this, pulling across the body, chicken wing effect, really giving you those inconsistencies in the strike. Now, finally, let's just finish off this drill. Let's place this glove underneath my left arm. So this really gives you a good feeling of keeping the body and arms working together with the club. Taking that nice stance, toes on the alignment stick. I want to avoid it on the way back and keep the glove in there on the way through. You can see that my body and arms are working together. They're not working independently and the glove would come out. So again, you've got some really good negative feedback in the sense of avoiding the alignment sticks and keeping that glove underneath your left arm. Let's now go ahead and hit a shot. So let's just briefly remind you of those setup points. So ball position in the middle of my stance. Weight, I want to feel 60 40 on the left side. Stance just wide of a club width apart. And then I'm in that correct setup. All I've got to do now is keep the glove under my left arm, avoid the sticks, and avoid the sticks on the way through. Let's feel we can do that. You can see that I've kept the glove there, I've avoided the alignment sticks, and I've really got that release happening together. I wasn't independent, and the glove comes out. I've really got the body and the club working together. Now, if you can do that, you'll see a better interaction with the ground, better chipping, so which in a sense that you get a better strike. You start seeing a little bit of spin there too, because those people that kind of chicken wing and pull the cross pull the club across the golf ball really suffer with that strike. So if you can train that better release all together with the body and arms, you'll see a better consistency in strike, giving you better spin, better distance control, and ultimately give you more confidence in your short game. More confidence in your short game means less pressure on your long game, and then from there, you'll start seeing those scores lower. Now, just as a side note, I really wanna say, if you can train this better release in the short chip shots, that you'll definitely see a better release happen in your long game. I most commonly see people that chicken wing across the golf ball in their short game, they very often do the same thing in their long game. Not in all cases, but very often they do. So if you can understand how this body and arms work together in the short game like this, you will hopefully see an improvement in your release in your long game too. So ultimately, doing some really good training work with some negative feedback with the glove and the alignment sticks will really benefit not just your chipping, but your whole game too. So let's now show you this from a down the line view and give you a better picture from there also. So we've said we want a stance that's just wide of a club width apart, ball position in the middle of my stance, into the pocket to get the weight 60-40, and my toes just along these alignment sticks like we said earlier. So if I'm someone that would chicken wing it and these arms break down, we'd see it pull across the body, incline to the alignment stick, Whereas if I'm gonna get that better release, we'd see this happen here and through to the target this way. So let's show you that in a real motion. So you can see there, I've kept the glove under my arm. I've got that release working more into square to in, not as choppy out to it across the ball, colliding into the alignment stick. So you can see this really easy, effective setup gives you some great feedback on whether you've got that effective release in your chipping and if you're standing to the ball correctly. So let's remind you of today's objectives. We said we wanted to stand to the ball correctly and improve the release. So we've talked about the effective setup. So ball position in the middle of the stance, club head width apart with the stance, weight 60-40 on the left side, and the butt of the club on the golf ball. Now we've got that effective setup to give us a consistent low point. 
Then we said we wanted to improve our release. So we wanted to stop the situation where the hands are breaking down and the arms are breaking down and this club is chicken winged and pulled across the body. We wanted to really see how this body and club and arms could work together to give us a more effective release. So we've said we really want to feel that we've got our glove underneath our left arm and we avoid the alignment sticks either side to really train that effective release. And like we said earlier, if you're releasing the club better and releasing the bounce and getting this interaction with the ground, you're going to see some more consistent strikes, even off bad lies. So therefore, you're going to give yourself greater confidence and we're going to see that chipping improve. Thank you for watching today's video on Alex Elliott Golf. Take away that effective setup to get that consistent low point and then take away the drill with the glove and the two alignment stick. It's a really good visual how you're going to train your body, train your release in your golf game. So thank you for watching today's video on Alex Elliott Golf. If you've not already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you and see you next time on Alex Elliott Golf.